Hey everybody. So I'm going to try to make a quick video. <laughs> As you've probably figured out, I'm not good at quick videos. But, um, so you so you probably saw my scan. What's going on with the left lung? I've got a pleural fusion. I have an appointment in five day, four day, five, in Wednesday, and today's Friday, to get this sucker drained. Because so it feels like I've got a balloon blowing up, and the other day, it, I, the Something happened and something pinched and I thought I had broken ribs and it was that painful. But luckily, ibuprofen and rest, it, everything calmed down. I'm still uncomfortable, but manageable. Um, whew, I'm having um, heart fluctuations, but that's normal. Anyway, so I went and picked up my meds for my next run of medications. <laughs> I was just like, I have to take how many and they're how big? So, um, I think this is the chemo one. Okay, so you can see my thumbnail. That sucker is almost as big as my thumbnail. And I have to take seven of these a day. Anybody who knows me knows I hate pills. And I gag on pills. So, I know for the next at least three months, I'm going to be gagging on these pills. <laughs> I'll have to find something to drink with these suckers. I mean, I'm not supposed to start, start taking them until next Tuesday. So, seven of those a day. Four in the, three in the morning, four at night before I go to bed. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then, I've got to take, mm, sorry, more fluctuations. Four of these. And you can see, they're also as big as a fingernail. So which means I'm going to be gagging on these too. Why can't they make these things smaller? I mean, honestly, they know we have problems swallowing stuff. <laughs> it's that's to just taking the damn pills is going to be torture. So two in the morning and two at night. So basically, I'm taking three plus two. That's five horse pills in the morning and six horse pills at night along with the other pills that I'm already taking. And then if I have any nausea or vomiting, more pills for that too. And then if I get the runs, well, guess what? We've got more pills for that. Yeah! Oh, my Lord. Can I just go back to infusions? I'd just rather just go into a vein and be done, like the Herceptin. But I guess this is how they do this, the Takaiza. It's an oral. I thought, oh, an oral would be nice, but I still have to go in for infusions anyway. So hopefully my body will let me swallow these horse pills without gagging on the horse pills because otherwise the next three months is going to be rather torturesome. But other than that, I'm doing okay. Except for the belching, I think that has to do with a little bit of gastritis that's going on. I don't know if it's because of the crap I'm coughing up and then swallowing and it's upsetting my stomach or if I just have gastritis because of my treatments. I don't know. But I feel like I have a balloon blowing up because I have fluid in my lung and then I have the gastritis which is blowing up and then so they're just blowing each other up and I'm just... Yeah. And so the Takaiza and I think it's, no, it's the, it's the Zolota that causes nausea and potentially more diarrhea so yeah just when I thought things were getting to be okay but anyway I thought that I thought you might find that amusing so I've I've been okay the um the, all the the the, the um, lymph nodes and the nodes the nodules around the left lung lung are are causing some pain um down my arm so I have I can tell that there's some lymph nodes that are irritated basically from you know down my neck and then under my clavicle I can feel the p aching pain and the aching pain radiates down my entire left arm I know it's n not likely to be my heart because I I monitor my heart regularly because I've had heart problems in the past so I want to know what's normal and what's not normal not because I'm a hypochondriac so I don't bother my doctors and I haven't needed to because I know what's normal for me so these little heart fluctuations are normal. It's probably because I'm dehydrated. Didn't I was out and about too much and didn't really want to drink because when you're driving and you need to pee, driving and peeing don't go along very well together. And in this time of COVID, no one really wants to use public restrooms anyway, unless they really, really have to. 
But um, yeah. So the thing with the Takaiza and the um, Zolota is um, hand and foot syndrome. And so mm, the nurses recommended this stuff to me. And uh, utterly smooth. Now the thing that you got to watch out for that you get is the extra care 20 or 40. So the, that's the urea. That's the part that we need to protect our hands and feet from the blistering effect. Of, not everybody gets it. But that's the, one of the most common side effects of these drugs. So they say to put it on th at least three times a day and to rub it in, massage it in, because what they suspect happens, what causes a blistering, is that some of the chemo drug um, uh, gets, it runs through the body. So, you know, a lot of it's, it does go where we need it to go, but some of it doesn't go where it just circulates through the body. So it's semi-systemic, which means like some chemos, they just go throughout the whole body and they're, they're complete systemic. Uh, this one is semi-systematic. I can't remember. I did. A, I talked about it in another video, but anyway, when it did, the part when the chemo is in your body, you know, other parts of your body, other than the cancer cells, it could break out of the small capillaries during you know hard work with fingers and walking, and that's when the chemo does the damage to those tissues. And I think that they were saying that the urea um, in these uh, these special lotions um, neutralizes it somehow. Don't ask me if that's the right word, but it helps. And there's studies that they did with urea that yeah, shows that it does help uh, reduce the symptoms, or if not even prevent them. And I use my hands and feet daily like most people, and I want to make sure that they're protected. So um, I've already started using, like my doctor su suggested, just to get the urea kind of into the tissues. And I already have neuropathy in my fingertips and skin issues from my mixed connective tissue disease. So it'll be interesting to see how it helps with that. Uh, my fingers have been feeling a little different the last couple of days since I've started using it. So I'm hoping that maybe my fingers are going back to normal. That would be awesome. Because the um, Katsyla really had a strong neuropathy side effect to it. And it actually also made my um, plantar fasciitis much worse. And it's, that's still kind of trying to recover. So I had neuropathy in my toes and the balls of my feet. But then I also had the the um, the nerve and tendon issues from the plantar fasciitis being aggravated by all of this as well. And so those are still trying to heal. Walking was getting kind of painful there towards the end of my Katsila treatments. But other than that, um, I'm doing okay. You know, the the I can't wait to have this fluid drained. Hopefully it'll relieve a lot of the symptoms. You know, when you just try to walk up a small, small slope and your legs feel like they have 100 pound weights on them, you know that's not quite right. But thank God my right lung is really big and healthy. So it's helping to compensate for the being the squished little left lung that's got some issues in it and around it. So, but other than that, you know, I'm still able to take care of myself and still able to be useful and productive. So that's, that's what's important to me. Anyway, um, I'll let you know more about what's going on. Um, but <laughs> the horse pills. Oh, the horse pills. I'm not looking forward to starting those on Tuesday morning. Oh, pray for me. <laughs> pray I'm not sitting there gagging on these chemo pills. All right, guys. Anyway, take care. Live life and make memories worth remembering.